Are you frustrated with online dating? Confused by all the new apps and fancy dating sites? Do you find yourself choosing the wrong person again and again? Well, studies show that hiring a dating coach can maximize your online dating experience. So no worries, I've got you. And I've created a virtual course called Doing Dating Right. It's a five video series that you can complete at your own pace in your own space, right at home. How to write your online dating bio, pick that perfect picture, and so much more. Want more info? Go to my website at jenniferherbits.com. Again, it's jenniferherbits.com. Good morning, good morning. This is Doing Relationships Right. I'm Jennifer Herbitz. I'm here every Tuesday and now on Friday as well for y'all. And I'm super excited. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I was on hiatus. I did the summer break thing. I am back. I, I put my kids in college. I'm one kid. I put my kid in college. I'm sad. I'm not going to cry, but I've got my favorite person. I can't say that because I've got, I, I, everyone yells at me. You say your favorite guest is here. You say, I'm, I'm your favorite guest. No, whatever. I've got the best, my favorite, Dr. Peter Lynn is here today. I love you, Dr. Peter Lynn. From Israel. The feelings, You're here from Israel. The feelings are mutual. Love, oh, gosh. I love you for so many reasons. But the one reason that I love you the most is because I am a firm believer that you need to go to marriage coaching. I really do. I feel like if I, woulda, coulda, shoulda, of course, I feel like if I would have gone to marriage coaching before I got married, I still would be married. That's how I feel. I'm, I'm sticking to it. And I, you know, I hate to go back and say, I, I don't, whatever, but Talk to me, Dr. Peter Lynn, about why you have a quote. Wait, I'm going to quote you really quickly. First of all, you have a book, a book that everybody should have. It's called Not a Partnership. <laughs> Correct. You can find it on I Amazon. It. You can find the book on Amazon, Not a Partnership. Not a Partnership. That's first of all. Your book is amazing. That's first of all. Everyone needs to get the book. First of all, I'm going fast because I love you. First of all, Not a Partnership, get the book. Second of all, Marriage Coaching, everyone needs it. So Dr. Lynn, first of all, Peter, we say marriages are built they do not just happen. I love it. Okay, you talk to me. It. What, what, I mean, what are we doing? It's, it's, it's the craziest thing in the world. You know, people have this wild expectation that if you just meet the right person, it's going to be epic. And things I are going to go smooth and things are going to work out and no communication issues and the intimacy will be strong. And like, it'll be from now until we're 90, bliss. And that is one of the craziest, theories ever and there couldn't be anything further from the truth and the problem is what happens when people hit a bump in the road they start thinking to themselves hey well i guess it's not meant to be maybe right. i should look elsewhere maybe and like nowhere in life with anything else do we apply that theory it's not one other place so now the most important area in your life you're going to apply that you're going to apply that theory like what it's just craziness that's what i did that was me. I really did. I thought, oh, you know what? It's not working anymore. I'll do a little therapy, whatever, whatever. Uh, I'm like, I think you're right. That is exactly true. What was I think? Right. Keep going. I love this. And, and sometimes what happens a lot of times people, you know, you mentioned people do a little therapy, do a list. That's already one foot out the door so they can, you know, justify their upcoming decision. Yes. I don't mean, I, right? I don't, okay. I had to say it, but like. You're right. No, thank you. You're exactly right. Like I thought to myself, you know what? I did the work. It didn't work. I can go now. Right. And, and many people I find, you know, when in the world of marriage therapy, you know, the first question a therapist really needs to be asking is, you know, how important is this to you? Like, mm -hmm. are you really here to like really do everything you can to make this work or not? And a lot of times people are just looking to check the box, but it's a crazy reality. And the paradigm you have to have is that no great marriage happens just because two amazing people show up. You have to know that great marriages take work, effort, time, dedication, you name it. And if you do that, you can end up with one of the things that can bring you the most happiness in your life. But everything else in our life, if we want to accomplish something, takes all those things. So why would your marriage be any different? Absolutely. Now, do you think it's a marriage? Could it also be a relationship as well? It doesn't have to be a, well, a partnership, a marriage, whatever. It's same thing. It'd be anything. You, have to, make it, you have to make a choice that you're going to do it and put the work in. And you have to make the choice that you have to make a choice that if I'm going to make this amazing, it's going to take a lot of proactive effort. Okay. And if I'm going and, and, and what you were looking at is you were looking at what am I going to invest here? And when we okay. look at a relationship that way, it's a totally different world. 
And you can then get to that world of bliss. And you can get to that world of being married for 20 years. And you really feel like it's your best friend. You can get – all those things are possible. But they're not possible just through the fact that you're going to find someone that's going to be perfect until then. Oh, gosh. I love this. And you know what? I have to say this too. So when I wrote my book, What It Coulda Shoulda, Divorce Coach's Guide to Staying Married, you know this, um, people gave me all this pushback. They were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're telling people to stay in a marriage if it's bad. And I said, no, no, no. You know, if it's abusive, if it's, you're not saying that, correct? You're right. hundred okay. percent. I'm not saying that. A hundred percent. I'm talking about the regular normal situation of two people that went through the dating process in a healthy way. Now I decide let's take the next step and let's get married. And then six months later, woo, downward spiral <laughs> kicks in. If there's right. abuse, if there's anything of the like, there's, substance issues, you name it, that's a different ballgame. Great. Okay. But most situations don't fall into that. Most situations fall in the right. world of just normal. Right. Where like, you know, the garage door opens and your heart doesn't flutter. You got it. It's and like, so oh, therefore, you don't wanna... how am I going right. to spend the rest of my life with this person? Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. So tell me, what are some, you know, if you could give us, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I know you have thousands of practical tools and I know that my listeners are getting out their pens and they're like, let's jot this stuff down. It's in a book, you guys, it's in the book, but what are some, where do we start? Where do we do? Do you think we should do it? You know, the minute that we feel something, well, how, how do we go about this? So I'll tell you like this. Um, I think there are, there, 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 there are two amazing tools out there that I think anyone who is thinking about wanting to get to a place in your life where marriage is a priority for you. Okay. For most normal people, it goes to dating and then goes into marriage. Now, some people date without any hope of it getting serious. I'm not talking about that. Okay. Okay. Talking about people who want to have a serious relationship or they eventually want to get into marriage. There are two things that you can do, and this can even start before you meet that person. Number one is the world of education. Why is it that, you know, why is it that we go through things blindly? You know, your son just started Syracuse, okay? He's going to choose a major. Don't cry. He's going to choose a major, okay? <laughs> he, did, that he, ma did. he did. He already did. Yes. Okay. In that major, what are they doing? They're going to, they're giving him information to prepare him for his career. Absolutely. Right? Like, my father's a surgeon. He spent 10 trillion years studying in order to become a surgeon. So why is it that the most important area of our life, we just go into it blind, okay? Now... There are reasons for that. Either we don't think information is out there or we just think it's going to be perfect or whatever it may be. But marriage education is a huge thing. And forget even marriage education, relationship education. How do you communicate? How do you have a great intimate life? How do you deal with finances? How do you get to know someone after you feel like you've already hit kind of some sort of limit or some sort of roof? There is so much information out there. There's books, there's podcasts, there's seminars, there's blah, 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 blah. We do not live in a world of any information shortage. Right. Okay. Number two is the greatest thing you can do. I find is get a coach, get someone that you can speak to and you can be real with. Hire you, yes. Jennifer. I'm <laughs> giving you a plug. Or both of us. Yes. Forget me. We'll go back. Hire yeah, you. Back. When you start speaking <laughs> to someone and you start speaking to someone about Okay, here are my blockages. Here's where I'm going to get stuck. How can I do X, Y, and Z? How can I push through it? You know, we hire coaches, you know, in all areas of our life. We have mentors. We have people who help us with our health. We have, like, the most important thing you're going for is to build that core of your life, which is your marriage and your family, to bring someone into the picture where they are focused on giving you everything you need to get you to that finish line and beyond it's just such an untapped resource. And, and just, just so you know, and I'm sure you experience this, a good marriage coach will say, or a good dating coach will say, if they see something which really needs some real therapeutic input, they'll say, great, I want you to work with this therapist and I want you to do fantastic. A coach isn't going to solve anything, but when you start speaking about it, when you bring someone into your life who can really help you and give you the tools, speak to you in a very candid way, can be support to you, help you deal with the downs, help you navigate trials and tribulations, it's a game changer. Absolutely. Okay. Question. Now, I know my listeners are doing this. Well, my husband won't go, or my boyfriend refuses, or I want to work on it, but he doesn't. What do you say from your opinion? In my opinion, go. <laughs> go. Your job is you can't, we can't control our spouses and we can't control our boyfriends. Right. All we can do is take responsibility for ourselves. And therefore, 
that can also be an indication about what's the potential here. Right. You know, how important is it to this person? You know, if I'm in a, if I'm in a relationship and all of a sudden my, you know, let's say we're not married, but my, the person I'm dating says, no, I don't want to do that. Like that gives an indication about like how serious you are because Absolutely. the relationship is struggling. Like, wouldn't you want to go to this? Isn't it important to you? So that kind of in some way reveals right? a little bit about how important this is right. to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I am go for it because you may find a few things out. You may find number one, maybe you're the issue. <laughs> number two, Which I probably am. Okay. <laughs> number two is this is not the right relationship for you. And number three, you may learn amazing things about yourself and potential skills that can help you in your next relationship. I love that. That's my favorite thing about this, about all this, you know, even as a coach, when I, I mean, I think coaches need coaches. So when I'm learning and I'm interviewing you or I'm interviewing the next person, I've learned so much. It's like, it just, you know, there's like all these communication skills that I thought I knew that maybe I didn't and the, oh my God, just a plethora. A hundred percent. Right? It's amazing. I'm on the exact yeah. same page as you. Yeah. And um, sometimes my, boy, my boyfriend hates me. He's like, <laughs> stop it. I don't know. I love language. My this, my that. I'm like, you know, you can't get enough. You can't get enough of it. I, I agree. I really agree with you. I think yeah. that, and what's amazing is, you know, you know, I, I always think about the marriages that I look up to or the relationships, mm -hmm. forget marriages, relationships I look up to is it's two people that are really growth oriented. They're always pushing themselves. How can we be better? How can we get more insight? How can we get our relationships to the next level? Like that's an amazing thing. And when you have that energy, when you have that, you know, willingness to put in the work, you can really get to a place of just such an unbelievable thing. When you have that healthy relationship in your life, when you have that healthy marriage, we all know that everything goes better. And even when things actually fall apart in your professional life or things in your community, et cetera, if your core is strong, you're very resilient. And we know the opposite as well when everything's going perfect, this job and this community thing and this with your friends and blah, 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 blah. But that core in your life is not well. It's a very lonely world. I agree. And you know, it, it's so funny because when you have a, you know, people say, oh, they have the best marriage. It's a perfect marriage. Nothing is perfect. And I think that even those, right, all those healthy marriages that we see and we, they look so, they've, just because they're still married, they've worked on it. They've, they're, they're staying together for a reason. And they're, they're, you know, we don't know. People don't know what's happening, but they're still, they're working towards something, right? I mean, they're together. Right. It's, it's tough. It, no great relationship. You have to notice. There's no great relationship out there that just got there because two great people showed up. Right. It I never, ever works that way. Listen, no. unfortunately, sometimes we live in a world, you know, especially by the world of social media, is that what's put in front of you is these snapshots of these perfect images of this husband and this wife and on that vacation and looking at each other's eyes. And we have a tendency to think, well, look how happy they are and look how amazing it is. And I don't have that. You know, you don't know what happened before the picture Absolutely. or after the picture or what's really going on behind the scenes. So, you know, that's unfortunately one of the, the biggest problems in the world we live in today when it comes to the world of social media is that we're given all of these 2D images of what's going on in life. But we live in the 3D world. Oh. If co-parenting during a pandemic taught us anything, it's that you need proof your kids are safe. With alcohol abuse on the rise, many co-parents are turning to the no-nonsense system committed to providing proof, protection, and peace of mind. Soberlink's alcohol monitoring system is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to provide evidence that they are not drinking during parenting time. Soberlink's real-time alerts make it easy to negotiate with any party. Judges rest assured that the child is safe. Attorneys get court admissible evidence of sobriety, and both parents have empowerment and peace of mind. Do divorce right and trust the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology to keep your kids safe, happy, and well-adjusted. To download the guide, five non-negotiables for embracing a new normal that I developed with Soberlink, visit www.soberlink.com backslash DRR. It's so frustrating to me. Sometimes I want to just shut it all down. Obviously we can't because we're in this, this industry where we need it, but um, it is, it is very, 
it's very hard to be with the, even my kids struggle with it too. That's a whole other podcast we could do. But um, I do have a question. So you do these um, amazing Instagram lives. And I, I know people maybe not, don't know this. You're in Israel. So we're kind of off, of, off the schedule a little bit, but um, you did one. I was just stalking you pre- previous to our, our, our uh, interview here. And you did one about practical skills and tools for your marriage, but you also did one about strengthening your marriage over the weekend, I think it was, or something about, it was like that. Tell me, I love these. Everyone needs to really, you need to follow, you need to do- really follow Dr. Lynn. You are just so, so let, me, let me tell you what, where this came from. And please, just thank you so please. much for the kind words. Um, it's like this is that, you know, you're on Instagram all day and you're, and you're seeing all this information, this seminar and this quote about marriage and read this book and do, I mean, like, ah, and, and so life, much. and life's also really busy. Right? Yeah. And what I find is that it's very easy to talk about wanting to work on your marriage, but if you don't proactively do it, it never happens. And even more than that is that you got to find a time when you can proactively do it. And what I find is that it's an interesting thing that uh, the theory that I've been working with for a period of time is that, you know, people always say, oh, I'm always working on my marriage. Eh, that's not so true. But what would happen if all of a sudden I said to myself, okay, my week is crazy. Of course, I'm always working on my marriage. But what if all of a sudden comes Friday night to Sunday night, I became like a weekend warrior and really proactively worked on my marriage. For the next 48 hours, I'm going to work on how I communicate with my spouse. For the next 48 wow. hours, I'm going to work on really bringing romance into our life. And what if we kind of like, like made it a bit easier for ourselves and got a bit more focused, especially in this world where we're so overwhelmed and we said, let me focus on making the weekend amazing in my marriage. And all the things I want to apply, I'm going to do it over the weekend. And what's fascinating is that when you see when people work hard in their marriages over the course of the weekend, the obvious thing happens is it spills over to the week. Absolutely. So my, do you say doing this every weekend or do so, pick one weekend a month? So my, my, my thing is like this, is that, you know, what if, what if we spent every weekend, you know, and what I do is I try and give practical tips that every Thursday I do an Instagram live where I try and get something practical for people to bring into their marriage over the course okay. of the weekend. I see. Okay, you know, great, great, great. And, you know, so for example, one week I spoke about the idea of marriage education. I said, this weekend, I want you to read a book on marriage. I want you to oh. listen to a podcast on marriage. Okay. You know, one weekend I spoke about, okay, we're going to work on communication. I want you to have one interaction with your spouse where you really focus on the key fundamentals of communication. And the whole point is, is really, you know, what if we really became weekend warriors and the time that we put okay. into our marriages, we did it in a really kind of focused, mindful way from Friday night until Sunday night, which is anyways wow. the weekend of family time that I think people would actually be able to achieve much more and it wouldn't be as overwhelming. And we may actually get somewhere. So it could be that, you know, let's say forget my show. Let's say you're working on something in your marriage. You're working on more romance. You're working on better communication. I would tell you, don't work on that all the time. Just try and really up your game from Friday night until Sunday night. Go for it in an intense kind of all immersion way. And what you'll see is that you actually have a chance of being able to change something if you do that. If you just try and work on it all the time with no beginning and no end, it's like this like ongoing thing you're trying to incorporate. Sure, it's just sure. not going to work. It makes and so much sense to me. So that's so what I do is I, I give a, a, a basically a pre weekend marriage show where okay. I try and give people practical things, and it's one topic every single week that they can focus okay. on, and they can now try this out in their marriage over the course of Friday night to Sunday night. Okay, so everyone can tune in on a Thursday night, right? Thursday night to find out the tip. I love that. I love that. I want to steal that, but I'm not going to because that's rude. Yes. I love it. I love I, it. I, I'm, t- I'm begging you to steal. I'm telling you. I think it's amazing. Because you think about it, you know, here you are a Tuesday afternoon, okay? Yeah. And all of a sudden, like, there you are in your office and you see something, you know, work on your communication. You're like, ah, you can't handle it. <laughs> no, I can't. It's too I'm much. Tired. But imagine if, I, if, imagine in my marriage, if I said to myself, okay, the weekend's coming. Friday night to, to Sunday night, I'm really going to step up and focus on my marriage. I'm going to, awesome. and, and if you just, you know, we live in a world of such information overload. People need I really feel, immersive yeah. experiences. They need to be more focused. I am begging you. And I'm saying this live on your show, please steal it. Okay. I'm expecting to see something on Instagram 
the pre-weekend <laughs> marriage show. Let me tell you something. The people that have been stealing my stuff off of my, I'm so mad, Dr. P- Peter, I'm so mad. I would never steal your stuff. It's off. I, I will give you credit. Let, Let me tell you that I'm much. I'm begging you, you to steal it because <laughs> why? Because I think it actually really helps. It does help, right? I think it really does. You know, can I just ask a question really quickly? I know that everyone, I just love you, Dr. Mike. As far as communication goes, I'm just going to go back to really quickly because I heard you say four, you know, some communication skills. I know everybody has a problem. That is the biggest issue. We're, you're going to come back on my show and do another one on just communication. Let's do it. For hours, please. But as far as communication goes, what do you think is the, like, if you could give us one of the best tips of communication, what do you think is the biggest problem? Why, why can't we speak to each other? Is I, I, so many of my clients come in and they're like, I can't talk to him or she doesn't listen to me or we don't understand each other. Why? Why can't we get it? What, what is the problem? So let me, let me tell you what I think is there are two fundamentals to all communication. I'm only going to give you one right now. Okay. 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 To make it and then even to read your book. Okay. To make it easier. Okay. Timing. Timing. Yes. We I love that one. function when it comes to our relationships in the world of immediate. I it's got to be discussed right now. I don't care if you're at work. I don't care if you're in the middle of a deal. I don't care if you're not feeling well. Now's the time. We got to deal with it. Oh, and I hate that. And I tell my, I say, no, you can't do that to him. You have to give him, a, you have to, you know, it has to be the wait, right time. People, if people oh. just hit the pause button. And they ask themselves the question, is this the right time for me and my spouse? If you can answer yes, great. If you're not sure, keep it quiet. And what you'll see is that sometimes when we wait a little bit, what happens? We're less emotionally kind of frustrated by it. We're more clear about what the real issue is. We're able to talk about it in more of a constructive manner. But people stink at the world of timing. Impulsivity. I'm so it's it's that impulsive, like you just gotta do it now. If I don't I don't get it. You're trying to spend the next zillions of years with this person forever and forever, happily ever after. Like, why do we get so caught in the urgency? You know what I tell my clients? I tell them if it's that important, write it down. Write yes. it down. Write it down. Yes, write it down. And just hold it. Hold on to it and put it and put it away and hold on to it till he gets home from work or until you can meet. And you know what I'm saying? Like it can't. And then by the time he gets home, maybe you don't even want to say it anymore. Or I'm going to say even further, maybe it's a couple of days. You know, maybe it's, you know what, you go out to dinner on a, you know, on a Friday, on a Friday night, or you're, you know, you're relaxing on a Sunday morning and the vibe is good. The energy is good. You're having a glass of wine. You're at the beach. Who knows what? All of a sudden you say, hey, can we talk about, you know, something that happened this week that was really hurtful? What you're going to see is that if you get the timing right, not only does the does the interaction bring you closer together, but it allows for more conversations to happen in the future. And every what? time we choose the timing wrong, all that happens is we each back into our own corner. Let's put the boxing gloves on and let the show begin. That is absolutely – you know what? Okay, I have another question. Do you think that comes with maturity? Do you think that that's like – I feel like when I was younger and, and just – Real silly and dumb. I used to be so much more impulsive than I am now. Or do you think it's a learned behavior that I learned, picked up along the way in my coaching stuff? I don't know. I feel like I'm better at it now. I, I think, listen, I think it takes time to learn, especially when we live yeah. in the world of instant gratification. Yes. yes. But imagine if you know you were taught before you got married that you've got to focus on this. And, 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 and someone started giving you the tools for that and made it so powerful to you, this paradigm. Like, okay, it may have been a little harder for you when you're younger, but like, it could have been a game changer. Had I known. And and his timing is, I I can't tell you, you know, I I can't tell you that when I succeed at this with my wife, it's awesome. And when I fail at it, which I often do, it just sets us back. Yep. Because you not only didn't discuss the point that bothered you, but now you discuss 50 other points that you're both frustrated by and therefore... It, 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 it's a, it, it's a terrible thing. And when the timing is right, it's so easy to have conversations. It's so meaningful to have, you know, talks where you're speaking about sensitive ideas. It's like beautiful. All of Absolutely. us know the greatest intimacy comes when there's great conversations. I love that. When, you, when, when there is great conversations, that leads to the most closeness. That's when people feel Absolutely. the most connected and the most one with someone. So like, this is an important area. 
oh my gosh, right? So my um, boyfriend, my partner used to tell me that his ex-wife used to bring up really important topics that she wanted to talk about and argue about right before bed. Perfect. (laughs) And he was like, I cannot, I'm exhausted. Like, please just let me go to sleep. It was like the worst timing. And you're so right. It's all about timing. All about, it's all about timing. And and like you said, the great piece of it, write it down. Write down your feelings, write down your frustration. And you may even build up to like, there's like five things you want to talk about. But if you get that timing right, boom, you can fly through all five of those things, have a beautiful conversation about them. And it actually now brings your relationship to the next level. Yes. I love it. I love it. I think that's just amazing. I lo- this is like my favorite conversation because there, there's like a so much goodness in it. Oh, you just love it. I love it. Um, I would like to keep you my entire life and just do this for hours. Let's and hours. do it. But I, I'm not. Ta- I'm telling you like this. I'm telling you on your show. I'm not <laughs> doing another one until I see advertised on Instagram a pre weekend show with this idea. <laughs> I'm not taking your stuff. You know, you come, how about you? We do an Instagram together and Instagram live on my show and we do it together. If you do the show, I'll be a guest on it. <laughs> okay. I would love that. Oh my gosh. I think you're just so amazing. Okay. That's and the I'm deal. Telling you, my, my listeners love you. They love you. I get more downloads from your, pro- this is my favorite. So um, before you go though, before you go, I need a couple things. I need you to tell everybody where to find you. Um, what's happening in your life that, that is important that people need to know the, about the book and everything else. And please do that before you go. Um, I'll, I'll say like this. The easiest way to find me is the best thing to do is find me on Instagram. No problem. Okay. And from there, you can get to number one, my book, Not a Partnership, which is really about marriage education. And number okay. two, you can get to me privately as far as the world of proactive marriage coaching. And please. I really spend time with people trying to give them the tools so they can get their relationship to that next level. And so those are, those are, that's, that's the best way to get in touch with me and we'll make it happen. And everything's going to be in the show notes as well, listeners. So, um, another thing too, I just really want to just say this again, because I know I said it at the beginning of the show, I'm going to say it at the end of the show too. If you, um, are engaged to be married or you're thinking about marriage or you're thinking about being in a long-term relationship and you, um, and you, please just get some coaching. Please get some marriage coaching or relationship coaching. Dr. Lynn, reach out to Peter. I am telling you right now, I would still be married had I done this. Had I had I known what I know now, woulda, coulda, shoulda, um, I would still be married. So uh, I, that's it. That's all there is to it. Please, 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 please. And amazing. Yes. I, I'll even say, even add on to that, even if you're in a marriage and you just find it's not going the yes. way you want, yes. Yes. go yes. for it. Do it, please. Don't give up. And you know what? Um, and again, we're not saying to stay in a marriage that is abusive or mentally or physically abusive. We're not saying that. So please don't reach out to me and tell me all that bad stuff. No, we are just saying, you know, if, if you can fix it, please try. And that's it. And um, Peter, I love you. And I love having you. Oh my so gosh, it is so great to see you. Please be it's in so touch, nice okay? To you too. I will, of course, of course. And everybody, um, listener, I say everybody, but really it's just you listening. So um, listener or listening or listener person, whoever, um, you know where to find me, jenniferherbits.com. And this is Doing Relationships Right. I love it. I love being back. I love this podcast and I love you guys. So um, you know what to do. Peace, love, and so much truth. Have a great awesome. day, guys. Awesome. Thanks, honey. Bye.